This world is not what you think it is. This world is not what you think it is. Go, go. Hi, I wanted to read you guys something that I wrote out and um, it's because it's kind of emotional and I didn't want to miss any points, but uh, it's it's called Why I Fight. And uh, if you like it, send it to someone, you know, spread the word. All right. <clears throat> Oof. All right, I was, uh, I was exposed to sexual depravity as a child. I've never talked about it publicly and I'm not going to anymore. In fact, it's kind of weird when people want to know details about stuff like that. It doesn't define who I am, and it's just something you have to know to understand the biggest, pic bigger picture of who I am and what I'm trying to tell people and why. I'm not a victim, and I come from a loving family with a hardworking father and a mother who did everything to protect her kids, and I don't even want to say this out loud and on video because it, it would make her sad. Uh, it's not her fault at all but we live in a fallen world. And I don't say I was abused because life itself is full of abuse. Life is abuse. So that doesn't differentiate anything. Leaving your house, you will be abused by the weather and the most corrosive abusive force on the planet is, uh, is time itself. I know what monsters look like and how they act. That's why I just shared that piece of personal information with you. I know how they seek positions of unquestioned authority, how they live in the upside down world that we are now seeing more and more of, a world where lies are truth, apologies are submission, submission is an apology, questions are tyranny, curiosity, unscientific, destruction is progress, progress is destruction, tradition is slavery and love, of course, is oppression. Becoming a father myself and feeling that ancient drive to protect, well at the same time I watch this rise in the open and accepted sexual abuse of children disguised as tolerance, uh, sent me on nothing short of a war path. I've been fighting a full-blown all-out war for two years now and I won't stop even after I'm dead. That's why we write words to paper. That's why we make videos. It's because death doesn't stop our ability to fight. I've had many casualties of this war. Career opportunities, friends, alienation of family members. But I'm never gonna stop, even after I'm dead. So why have I been relentlessly chipping away at the moon landing story? I've been asked this a lot lately, and that's one of the reasons I'm making this video is because I want to make it completely and unquestionably true why I'm doing it, <laughs> at least. Because I saw Bill Nye on his show, Bill Nye Saves the World. He said that a two-year-old can now choose their gender, and it is science, and it is peer-reviewed, and everyone's wearing a lab coat, and it is, of course, factual. I saw a flash of a monster that I haven't seen in many, many years. And I saw it clear as day. And when I saw parents break their ancient protection instincts and serve their own children to this new idea of gender fluid infants, it reminded me of the stories of Aztec sacrifice. I always wondered how people could do that. How they could offer up their children to the great pyramid. I know science well and I've always loved it. And one scientific experiment was the Milgram experiment, proving the human submission to authority. And in this moment, I saw a new science, a science not based in fact, but in the occult and ritual and pain and death and an abuse. The monsters seek authority. The Aztec priest ripping out the heart of a baby and eating it, the top of that pyramid, as the indoctrinated masses say, praise, praise be to the one who saves us. 
And that's the thing about monsters, ladies and gentlemen. That's the thing about evil. And I know evil. Evil makes you love him as he takes everything from you. I'm a Christian and I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but that is my faith and I could not prove it. That is why my logic is consistent and my logic is sound. My science is good. Faith lives in the soul and in a spiritual world that cannot be put in beakers and it doesn't wear lab coats, nor should it. But this new religion of science just like what all monsters do, claims the opposite of what it is. It mimics. It says it isn't a religion at all. It is a fact. God, this is not easy for me to read. This is, uh, I have a rage response to some of this stuff. For two years now, I have cut off the heads of thousands of the cultural hydra. Meme after meme, show after show. I point out what they're doing. I speak it. People agree, they support me, or they hate me, they try to ruin me, but it's done nothing. The Hydra just keeps popping up new heads because I wasn't attacking the heart of the monster properly. I wasn't showing the new cult of science for what it actually is. And these aren't your saviors, these aren't your priests. These are monsters, and I'm fighting to win. It started with the moon landing. It is the one event that I can prove without any reasonable logical doubt that was faked and why it was faked. NASA says it has destroyed the technology and it cannot be rebuilt, just like Joseph Smith and his seer stones. The lack of voltage alone and the extreme temperature fluctuation of upwards of 600 degrees Celsius at 290,000 miles away would make TV transmission um, impossible with any form of electricity, especially through the 60,000 kilometer Van Allen belt, which is basically a giant nuclear explosion. No one has ever gone back despite people's never ending desire to explore our solar system. No other country has attempted to plant their flag uh, on the moon next to ours, which contradicts the very nature of countries, corporations, and of course, humankind itself. People still go to Greenland, but not the moon, despite $24 billion a year in funding. But in 1969, with less tech than a cell phone, they did it and played a round of golf on that moon. That is a lie. This is a religion. If you accept Neil Armstrong as your personal savior without any proof, you are in. And most people don't know it. They think it's fact. They don't see it because they don't understand the nature of monsters. Pedophilia isn't about sex. It's about control. It's about continuing the cycle so you don't have to face the reality that this world is fallen and broken and full of snakes and it's exhausting and it hurts and it's a never ending war to spot out and kill the snakes that wanna eat your kids. I get why people ignore this stuff. It's tiring. When you have to face what happened to you and what happens to people, it hurts horribly bad. I understand moral relativity. I know why people do it. I don't. If you tell me that you understand, if you, if you, if you understand, if you accept science as your savior, that you have faith in science and it is not based in fact, if you tell me you understand that the food pyramid, hairspray, ozone layer, gender, gender neutral science in the lab coat, of the priest, if you understand that that's faith, you at least know you're in a cult, which is half the battle. It's a very important part of the battle. If you know you're in a cult, if you're self-aware that you're in a materialistic fallen cult, good for you, but just please protect your children because that's all we got. Becoming a father has changed me in, in very, very, profound and deep spiritual ways all for the good if we can't protect our kids what's our point kids are hope kids are the future kids are all we got 
And if you sacrifice your children on this new altar, you're pathetic. You're a coward. And the snakes will eat you. They come for everybody. They have no allies. Snakes have no friends. They're cold-blooded. They seek warmth. And they'll suck your blood dry. Trust me, I know snakes. I know snakes. We never went to the moon. We never went to the moon. We never went to the moon. And I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna stop until I rip this whole thing down and they stop fucking with kids. And talk about the things that interested us most, in particular the, the uh, things that occurred on and about the moon. We will use a number of films and, and slides, which most of you have already seen, with the intent of, of pointing out some of the things that we observed on the, the spot, which may not be obvious to, to those of you who are, who are uh, looking at them here from the sur surface of Earth. Sonic moon Plans were made by the bankers in the back room Get the president out of the way And hire Stanley Kubrick Under the Masonic Sonic moon Everyone hoped that the boys would come home soon One more day and they'll drop from the plane And splash into the ocean Conspirators got a free ride to the States They turn Nazi into NASA They just couldn't wait Under the Masonic The bankers in the back room The owl sees into the night And the secret will never be told Under the Masonic moon Under the Masonic moon were made by the bankers in the back room The owl sees into the night and the secret will never be told 99, proceeded, 3, 2, 1, ignition Right away, Houston Red, red, red into the night and the secret will never be told okay 30 seconds 308 your number take a 
through 1,500 feet, and each dot looks good. Right away, Houston. It's going to sound crazy, but I was listening to John Lennon's Imagine, one of the worst songs ever made. Like, it's brilliant wizardry, but it's truly horrifying. Imagine there's no heaven, no hell below us. And imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, but above us only sky, right? So, just like when I stopped watching porn and I replaced it with conspiracy videos, right? The way things work, the way humans work, the way consciousness works, the way everything works, is you have to replace things with things. So we are a people that looks up to God and we pray and we look up and we can't believe the majesty of the majesty of the clouds and we think about heaven and just the enormity and the beauty of it. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us only sky. So we took the con we took the action of looking up and seeing God, and we don't see God up anymore. We see empty space coupled with infinite possibilities. It's the ultimate wizard spell because Isaac Asimov, and according to Vox Day, his son is like one of the worst pedophiles in history. A lot of these sci-fi guys are fucking awful human beings, by the way. So you have these, all these wizards, these high-level wizards, and they'll, and they'll phrase it in ways that, that'll blow your fucking mind. Where they're like, this blew my mind when someone said that there's more galaxies in the universe than grains of sand on all the beaches in the world. So you think, a galaxy is full of solar systems that are full of planets. I mean, even if you have a bunch of planets with nothing on there, it's like the odds that there's another planet like us or another planet, like it could be anything, right? In your mind now, it goes infinite. It goes anything you can imagine is there. All the grains of sand in all the beaches, there's more galaxies than that. But it's also completely void of everything like the space between it's like one light year is the distance that light travels in a year that's 186,000 miles a second so a full year is a distance that we cannot comprehend that is the emptiness that is an emptiness that you can't wrap your mind around and space is completely empty it has no atmosphere it has nothing it is the absence of everything so what does it do simultaneously? What is this generation lost in space with no time left to start again? I mean, it's in the songs. The devil can't. So <clears throat> we look up and we see complete emptiness. Like we are a speck. We are nothing. We are a ball spinning with no direction in a sea of emptiness that we can't possibly conceive of. Nothing is there. But simultaneously, anything you can possibly imagine is up there as well. And so to bridge that gap between uh, science fiction and reality, which is what uh, science attempts to do. Science is wrong more than fucking anything. Watch any movie from the 90s or anything where they're just referencing anything scientific. They were wrong about fucking everything. So to bridge that, you had to put a human being up there. You had to blow people's fucking minds. You had to, you had to uh, merge those two ideas, right? So you have the ultimate wizard spell. Infinite emptiness, infinite possibilities, right? You put it in the same place people used to look at God with. Right? You used to look at stars to align yourself like where you were you looked at the moon to see like was it harvest moon like uh are we planting right now like how's the tides it, it helped you orient yourself and you focused on the earth and your family and uh your surroundings and you um it gets guys i'm right about this i i like it it's brilliant and evil okay we're thinking about terraforming mars 
think, just think, what does that do to a population? Okay, so people are now like, life on Mars. Okay, we skipped all over, the moon is, no one talks about the moon. By the way, the Mars is a red version of the moon. It's just as empty. There's no atmosphere. It's way farther, way harder to get to, apparently. Uh, it's just red and it's super, it's full of dust and nothing's there at all. But yet now everyone's like, gotta get to Mars, right? So people are like, okay, we can terraform Mars. We can alter the atmosphere. No one's doing that to fucking Greenland. No one does that to fucking Alberta. You know how much land on Earth? Earth is designed. Earth is perfect for human life. The amount of oxygen and carbon, all that. What are we saying? We are killing our Earth. We are killing it and us being here is ruining our mother. Is we are carbon emissions is this will be uninhabitable, so we will have to go to Mars? If you think Earth, like we could detonate all the fucking atomic bombs we've ever made. We could, it would be a utopia compared to anything you could possibly do to Mars. Mars is hostile to all life. Mars, you can't take one breath without instant death. Mars is not capable of having any human life on it without, even theoretically, if it's even possible, uh, an unimaginable amount of technology and engineering to keep you alive as you're in this horror of a landscape. We're like, our temperature may go up one degree in the world, in the sea level, and we must go to Mars. And that's that's a dead end. Our nearest star, Alpha Centauri, is what? Two, two light years? You can't comprehend that distance. If you go the speed of fucking light, it takes two years to get there. So what, you go there, it takes you two years. But when you go the speed of light, according to Einstein's theory of relativity, time passes way faster everywhere outside. So you, if you travel the speed of light for two years, according to Einstein, um, you know, I might be a conspiracy theorist, but the rest of the world would age like 30 years, right? So how in the fuck would you possibly even go to our closest star that most likely has absolutely no planets that can possibly have life, right? We have a giant Earth and uh, we can do amazing things here and it's designed for life, but yet we're already not looking at it we're, we're done with it. We've ruined her. We've raped and murdered and we were sacrificed. And now when we look up, we don't see God in the heavens just saying, one day, one day you'll get here, you know, be a good person. You know, you look down, you don't see hell, you don't see Jimmy Savile, all the people that fucked up that are now burning in hell. No, you see like the mantle and the nickel core and the blah, blah, blah. They took away our connection to everything and they replaced it with nonsense infinite vastness and infinite possibilities and none of it you can ever accomplish that's the ultimate fucking psyop it's it's like it's perfect and evil as fuck just believe do you question science do you question science how the fuck would you make mars livable why haven't we tried to make the moon livable? And why don't we focus on the earth that's unbelievably livable? We're just so enamored with these fucking wizard priests that don't know shit about science. I know more about science off hand than some of these wizard priests. It's like, they'll just try and blow your mind with like things that you can't imagine. It's like. On Venus, the atmosphere is so dense that two mile an hour wind would knock you right off your feet because of all the density of the atmosphere. And it gets 400 degrees and it's like, who gives a fuck? We're not going, we're not living there. It's, it's, it's impossible to go there. We can't get back to the fucking moon apparently. We never went to the moon guys. We never went to the moon. And there's a reason these lies exist. It's to keep people, it's to keep their eyes in that shit, that just fucking nonsense. Infinite emptiness, 
infinite nihilism. The amount of empty, just random, hopeless, black, coupled with anything you can imagine. How the fuck is that not a PSYOP? And then you couple that with the fact that all evidence says that we never went to the moon and that NASA just endlessly lies. It was started by an SS Nazi who was best friends with Walt Disney. They said they no longer have the technology. They erased all the tapes and no other countries ever went to the moon. How can you believe that? How can you live in a world where you aren't skeptical enough or you're like so just, you just have to fucking fit in? Are you scared? Like what, what is it? Everything isn't a lie. Yeah, we faked the fucking moon landing. So what? That's a real keyboard. This is a real fucking white claw spritzer. It's freeing. It makes you realize that like that cognitive dissonance that people feel all the time and can't put their finger on it and just get angry at dumb shit. And it's like, just let it go. I don't know. I gotta go. Hit the like button. You guys know that this shit should be listened to. trusted everything that NASA'd say Maybe they misplaced the tapes and we'd be back one day And when you're out there out there, yeah, God I got ostracized For questioning something that gives people pride Or did I know too much? Does that make me crazy? here telling you telling you to prove that the earth is round you scream so loud it don't make a sound i'm doing a mind exercise and it's no surprise that you think i'm crazy I think it's insane to eat what they throw in your trough Your soul is telling you something is off Maybe that's the cause of your depression To be a slave to what we've been told Or maybe you're crazy Or maybe you're crazy Maybe you're crazy to keep your blindfold on.
Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. But probably not. Good evening, bears. Welcome to another stream. This world is not what you think it is. This world is not what you think it is. Oh, oh. And here's the here's my opinion on the flat earth. I don't believe the earth is flat at all. But something is up. Something's 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 very suspicious. I I I feel like it's a lot like um Aliens, like the alien uh, narrative, where the government's doing some shit and people fill it in with aliens. Like they see some shit in the sky. <clears throat> there was abductions, a lot of abductions in uh, Yosemite and all this stuff. And they're like, aliens. Well, it could also be the parasitic state that, that um, extorts trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars in blood over its people for centuries. That's way, way more likely, like this. This was the thing about Flat Earth that I found that I think is very suspicious. There are no commercial flights over Antarctica. Then I kept looking, there's no flights at all over Antarctica. Then I started looking at pictures of Antarctica. There are no pictures of Antarctica. Antarctica, the pictures of Antarctica are composites. There is no pictures of Antarctica. No flights go over Antarctica. I don't know which three these are, but this was an attempt at showing that there are flights over Antarctica. There isn't. That, there's no flights over the, even close to the pole of Antarctica. Those are all on the edge. And the way the flat earth people describe the earth is that Antarctica is the entire edge of the world. Now, I, I have a lot of, I'm gonna have on Eric Dubay, I believe his last name is, to discuss it. And I think I can disprove Flat Earth, but it's a lot harder than you think. Um, and by the way, all of science is based on questioning. So people saying like, oh, you've lost your mind by questioning this. No, I'm, I'm curious. I'm intrigued. I'm skeptical. And that's what science is. Science is not a religion. Science is not a way to view the world. Science isn't a lens of control. And I was listening to Stefan Molyneux, who I'm friends with, and I'm a huge fan of, debate a flat earth guy, and the flat earth guy won the debate. And that was very humbling for me. Uh, if I'm gonna have on Eric Dubé, I have to like really do some research because Stefan got really angry at the guy. And the guy was saying, there's no pictures of, of globe earth. And, and Stefan was like, but NASA, and the guy was like, the government, Stefan. Like, you're, you're the guy that, that is against the government. You hate the government. Why do you, the only evidence of round earth, like the only images of round earth is a heavily photoshopped image from the various governments of the world. And then, you know, Manu was saying, well, the European space program, China, and he's like, the governments. After World War II, there was absolutely a propaganda campaign uh, where the governments of the world got together and are doing some shit. And this is another thing that I find very bizarre about the Flat Earth narrative, is their map is the UN map. The UN map is what they believe is how the world actually works, and wouldn't that be hiding in plain sight? Now, the world is not flat. I, there's no fucking way. But to listen to someone that smart get beaten by a guy simply asking questions, it made me realize that the amount of people that are incapable of questioning their most basic beliefs is mind blowing. And someone accused me of being postmodern, where this is the opposite of postmodern. I'm not saying I have a truth, you have a truth, truth is whatever we believe it to be. I'm saying that unless you can prove the steps along the way, uh, 
you can't get to a conclusion. My, and this is not a new thought for me. Uh, I was having dreams about Antarctica last night because I don't think the world is flat, but they're hiding something in Antarctica. I'm going to dive deep in this. Guys, they won't let anyone go into Antarctica. Like, after World War II, there's, there's, there's all these operations where they, like, they literally won't let you go into Antarctica. It's a continent. It's not allowed to be seen. You have birds. I know, dude. It's wild. Operation, um, uh, Operation, what is it? Fishbowl Operation. There's a, there's a few of these. It's the Forbidden Zone. Yeah, an entire continent is a forbidden zone. What if they found out the Earth wasn't a globe? Wouldn't that be so ironic, guys? The globalism is the mimic is, is the mocking mimicry that's hiding in plain sight. Wouldn't that be hilarious? In just a sick way. And the UN itself has the map that flat earth people believe is the real map and they're hiding it right in plain sight. And if people think I'm insane for questioning things, this is how you, you're supposed to question everything. Operation Deep Freeze, yeah. That's the whole point. Operation High Jump. You're supposed to question everything and that's how you get to your conclusion. Anybody who says you're stupid or you're insane or you're losing your mind because you are willing to listen to somebody or to question somebody, they're trying to keep you an animal in a cage. And it's like, oh, he's a flat earther. He's a flat earther. He's a flat earther. It's like, why can't we go to Antarctica? Why are we not allowed to fly over Antarctica? Why is citizens of the world, as these assholes like to call it, why can't anyone go into the interior of Antarctica? Why? I have several reasons that I believe the Earth is a globe, and I would love to debate them and talk them through with um, my flat Earth guy. But that being said, it's going to be a lot more challenging than the moon landing thing. I, I would debate anybody about the moon landing hoax. Anybody. I wouldn't even need much prep. It's so obvious that it's laughable. I feel more comfortable with that debate than me debating that the earth is round. And I know that sounds insane, but it's not. If you really, really look into this stuff, there is some weird, there's a weird amount of rebuttals for obvious shit. Well, that's another thing watching Molyneux and that Flat Earth guy. The Flat Earth guy blatantly won, which was surprising because Molyneux is one of the smartest people I know. The Flat Earth guy was like, yeah, it was started by Nazis, Steph. He's like, it's the government. It, it's a foreign government operating within the United States government funded by tax money, and you trust them? I just don't get why that anyone falls for that. Listen to it. It gets to the point where Malin is getting angry and, and kind of mean. And the guy, the guy, th this was Malinu's argument, which kind of like bothered me a little bit. He was like, you're, you're going to face horrible social repercussions. You work in a warehouse because of your views. Like people are going to think you're crazy. Like that was Malinu's argument. And I was like, I felt the same way when Crowder was on Rogan. Like when, when Rogan was bashing Crowder for saying that marijuana isn't good for you. Like, I'm so, like, that's the funniest thing when people say that I'm some kind of asshole. It's like, I'm such an underdog supporter. Like, when I see someone bullying somebody that I believe is more right than the person doing the bullying, I get really fired up. And so I got real protective because I was like, Stefan Weitzer's higher IQ than Black Molyneux is going to make an argument that social outcasting is, a, is what? That episode is very unprofessional. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not talking shit about Molyneux. I'm sure people will clip this and be like, Owen Benjamin, start shit with Molyneux. Fine. Whatever you need to get your clicks, guys. But, uh. It, it just seems so unlike him because he's so good at arguments. He literally wrote the book on it. And uh, I, I just, 
as someone who's facing um, a lot of social outcasting myself, I didn't like that at all. Not one bit. Hey, man. You ever looking to flat earth? I want to talk more flat earth. This is the thing I want to ask the round earth people to explain to me. If the earth is spinning, it's 700 miles an hour, 1100 miles an hour, whatever. Why isn't the air spinning? And before you answer real fast and say, oh, it's all relative, it's all the same shit. The higher you go in the air, the less atmosphere there is until there's almost no atmosphere. Like 40,000 feet up, there's almost no atmosphere. So where is the break where you get away from the atmosphere in, in, in which it's no longer relative? This is a lot harder than I expected proving that the earth is round. It's fucking weird. It is, it is way, way, way harder. The jet stream's 100 miles an hour. You ever see 100 mile per hour winds? Oh uh, yeah, 1,000 miles per hour ain't happening. Dude, I'm telling you, it's fucked up. So, if the Earth is spinning 1,100 miles an hour and the atmosphere somehow miraculously is attached to the Earth, is that, is that what kind of friction is that? Sliding friction is when the, the molecules are touching, so sliding friction is moving it along, right? Fine. When you go up enough, there's no more atmosphere. So you are now just, like if you're in a hot air balloon that goes up 30,000 miles, there's no atmosphere. So if you, why isn't the earth flying by? Stop talking about this? Ah, now you're banned. Why don't you join Coddington Bear? Get the fuck out of here. No one needs your shit. There's no wind because we are in a vacuum. You, we both know that doesn't make any sense. And I'm not a flat earth person. I want someone to fucking explain that to me. Atomic density? Saying words don't don't explain anything. Just saying atomic density. Friction. I just, I just said that. There's several types of friction. That friction would be the fri um, sliding friction. Where it's two objects touching each other. Kind of like two boards. You have to go at a certain speed. If you go too fast, you slip, right? So if you go at the right speed, you carry the other board with you. We have molecules of the atmosphere. And if it's attached to our spinning shit, fine. You go up 40,000 feet, there's no atmosphere, none. It's basically a vacuum. So where do you pop out of that situation? The jet stream, that's 100 miles an hour, not 1,100. And when you're out of the atmosphere, when you're going west to east or east to west, I can't remember which way, why is the earth not flying by underneath you? You're not in that anymore. So far, no one's been able to explain that to me, which is fucking weird. Please comment on it. I would love to stay a globe earth person because being a flat earth person is another level of uh, ostracism that I really don't want at all. So please, for the love of God, someone fucking explain to me why when you leave the Earth's atmosphere, does the Earth not at that point appear to be going 1,100 miles an hour underneath you? Here's another one. Why do flights not go around the poles? Please explain this to me because I do not like where the logic is taking any of this. It's not fun. It's actually incredibly isolating. And I don't want it at all. The last thing I need in my life is to be given another label that makes me look insane. That sounds awful. Someone said not flat. Well, please fucking tell me how you can go up into near earth orbit in the, and stay still and the earth is not flying by if it's spinning on a goddamn axis. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't explain it, can you? The fuck? Inertia, that doesn't mean a goddamn thing and we both know it. Inertia. I'm just says inertia. You don't think I know about inertia? Uh, Owen is dumber than I thought, says Martin. Okay, Martin, you're no longer allowed to talk to the grown-ups. I'm obviously not dumb. If I was dumb, 
3,552 people wouldn't be watching me after two hours and 11 minutes of me just talking. Dumb people don't, don't retain that amount of people. You're just a stupid person. The worst is like, I obviously understand physics. I got 790 out of 800 on my physics PSATs, right? That's like one question I got wrong. I understand physics very, very well, not on a level of like MIT or anything like that, but on a basic way above average level, I understand the, the, the principles of physics. The earth isn't flat. That's fucking insane. Why can no one explain to me how the globe is spinning at 1100 miles an hour? And if you break the fucking atmosphere, even out of relative, whatever relative is, and you're flying in a direction opposed to the spinning, why don't you double your speed? Like if you're, if you're going 1100 miles an hour, why is it not 2200 miles an hour if, you, if, if the earth is going the opposite direction? What the fuck is that? So far, I've got nothing on it. No one can explain it. <sighs> okay, guys, all the people saying that the Earth is round, there's no way they understand the particle density and radio theory. So when they say everyone's retarded who thinks the Earth is flat, they don't understand why they think the Earth is round, is my bottom line. They don't. So when people just go, oh, well, it's... It's clearly just radio theory and fucking uh, frequency and fucking particle. No, no, you don't know. You don't know. And you're trying to fucking hold on to something that you don't understand. And that's the problem I have. Is people with this condescending, shitty attitude, but they don't actually know anything. But they go, oh, I mean, you're such a fucking idiot. Like, why would you? Then explain to me how you can go above the atmosphere and you do not see a spinning Earth. Explain to me how NASA shows us images of the Earth that are Photoshopped. The clouds are fucking duplicates of the other clouds in the fucking thing. Does that not ring any bells? And I'm incapable of going with lies. I'm in fucking capable of it. The Earth isn't flat. There's no fucking way the Earth is flat. That would probably cause me some type of nervous breakdown if that were the case. So can someone, for the love of everything good, explain to me without nonsense talk like, oh, inertia, oh, inertia. Do you know what inertia means? Do you understand the, the calculations of inertia? No, you fucking don't. It doesn't answer a goddamn thing just to say inertia. Why the fuck a spinning globe when you're going against it, it doesn't fly underneath you. Coriolis effect proves the earth isn't flat. I, I believe that as well. Uh, I'm pr I, I really hope we have more than the Coriolis effect. Really hope we have more than that, guys. Really hope we have more than the Coriolis effect. Uh, if the earth is flat, why lie about it being round? What is the point? I can tell you a lot of reasons. If the earth is flat, I may tap out of YouTube for a while. Like that would fuck me up, but I am not enjoying the path that this is taking me on because the arguments for the earth being round are not very strong at all, like at all. And this is something I would never, ever, ever, ever question, ever. And another thing is when I question that the moon landing didn't happen, like everybody was like oh in a month he'll think the earth is flat oh this retard's gonna think the earth is flat by the way i'm not arguing that the fucking earth is flat i just want people to fucking explain to me how it's round i'm watching you go through what i went through before i believed the earth was flat it's hysterical and amazing can't get enough of your show i, I i'm having a i'm not comfortable with any of this and uh i'm not on board with the flat earth thing at all. I'm just uh, finding the arguments for round earth to be, because I'm preparing to debate this Eric Dubai guy, Dubai. And so I want my fucking arguments concrete. The arguments for round earth are horrible. 
How about until the flat earthers can build their own rockets and take pictures, we don't stress over it? Well, NASA has been proven to be the biggest liars on the fucking planet. So, uh, and they have. Like, a bunch of flat earth people have gotten balloons to go up 120,000 feet. And they take pictures of a world with no curve. I'm not comfortable with any of it. Neither are you. But I'm just reporting the fucking facts. And don't get mad at me, man. Don't fucking blame the messenger, dude. I'm just, I, I'm like in this thing to win it. And I'm not going to fucking go in there half cocked and be like, dude, the earth is round. Just look at the fucking shit. It's not easy to prove, guys. Because I don't go in, I don't do sophistry or wizardry in debates. I'm not going to go in and shame someone or uh, use tricks, rhetoric tricks. I want hard motherfucking evidence that the earth is round and i've never been up there just someone give me a concrete obvious fucking thing to let me win this fucking debate do your research then owen i okay now you're banned you don't think i do research you don't think i do this for what 10 12 hours a fucking day i listen to shit while i'm doing fence work all day and then i look it up in books Here's how I would try to explain it. Since the Earth is spinning, so is air attached to the surface of the planet. When you fly in the direction of the opposite of the spin, you are fighting at speed. Right. So if you're not in the air, right? And don't fucking get mad at me if this makes your head hurt. Just know that I'm not trying to fuck with you, okay? If the air is part of the spin and you get above the air, which is what flights do, why are you still subject to the subjective relative air movement of the spin of the earth? Let's say the air is cemented to the earth, which already is weird because if you spin a ball in, in water, the water doesn't stay with the ball, maybe a little bit, but not really. Let's say the air is completely with the spin of the earth. You are now above the air. Why the fuck are you still sub subject to the relative spin of the earth? If you're going against the spin, why are you not going twice as fast? And don't just say you're a retard, you're a conspiracy. Th what the fuck? Do you guys seriously think that already in motion inertia means anything in this? Like, please look up the words you fucking use. That doesn't mean anything. Already in motion inertia. What does that mean? If I had a gun to your fucking head and say, define what you just said, what does that mean? You would say, oh, I mean, <laughs> Owen telescope. So all the planets and moons we see through a telescope are round. So Earth is the only planet in our solar system is flat, really. Okay, retard. Imagine they're all flat disks, right? Do we see spheres in the sky? Dude, I'm getting angry because everybody that's acting like I'm retarded has not thought through any of their arguments. So if we see a bunch of circles in the sky, does that mean they're spears or fucking dinner plates? You can't prove it. You can't prove it. That isn't a fucking argument. And if you're just gonna hang me out to dry, like I'm gonna go argue somebody, and, and your whole argument is you look in the sky and you see circles, and that means something is a fucking spear. I'm getting angry at the concept that I, I can't win this debate. Dude, take a pill, way too much drama, bro. Well, you're now banned for life. I, I've, been, I'm, I've had four drinks. I just hung out with my wife. I'm having a great time. Also, how can you see trillions of miles away? It, it's all nonsense. It's all nonsense. Someone please explain it to me that isn't retarded. Some people are thinking centrifugal force, that doesn't mean anything, and we both know that doesn't mean anything. How come when you look at a boat going out to sea and it vanishes at the viewer's convergence point, look through a pair of binoculars, you can see the boat again? The earth is, it can't be flat. I mean, that would just be insane. I, I, I don't. Oh, Eric, I won't destroy you too bad. I'm gonna win, you little cunt. Ha! <laughs> That's why I'm fucking, oh, Eric is actually here taking notes. I'm gonna win, Eric. That's why I'm taking this seriously. I need my people to fucking give me some intel. It's all science fiction, not an argument. Space is a vacuum, not an argument. Do you guys know what arguments are? Does anyone know what a fucking argument is? You're getting 
Dare my friend, you're on the right track. I, I'm not getting in the flat earth cult. And no, sorry, I'm not going to be disrespectful. Uh, that's a that that's sophistry. It's wizardry if I start mocking them for thinking something that I find ridiculous. Uh, space is water. Uh, I don't know what that means. That's fucking insane. If you t if you can take a variety of snapshots through a telescope of another planet and see if it's rotating, that that that's one of the worst arguments I could possibly imagine. So it's like saying, is my dog, does my dog have rabies? Well, I can see that dog that doesn't have rabies. This is like, this is a fucking nightmare. This is literally a nightmare trying to fucking disprove this thing. Well, if, if you look through your binoculars and see another dog without rabies, that means your dog doesn't have rabies. What in the fuck does that mean? You're in motion, keeps moving. Okay, Jason, if you are not in a medium that is moving, how does that apply? Let's say you see a river flying by you and you are in the air looking at the river because you're standing on the riverbank. Are you in motion because you can see a river in motion? Of course not. That's an insanely stupid argument. If, if, if the atmosphere is all moving with the earth flying around at 1100 miles an hour and, and you are out of the atmosphere, which happens in low earth orbit or the average Delta flight, how in the fuck are you still subject to that to being in that medium? That doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> because you are moving when still first. That that means absolutely nothing, and we both know it. Drag means nothing. Science can't prove the earth moves. It literally can't. And this is fucking awful. Uh, if we hover over Earth, can we get to Australia faster? Guys, this is a nightmare. It's so fucking hard to prove 1100 miles per hour but it still takes 24 hours to make one rotation well i don't know i haven't done the math on that i really hope one can prove the earth is round me too penny take an astronomy course at your local university now you're banned i've obviously taken astronomy courses and that's not an argument okay another weird thing is that the sun is 400 times larger than the moon but it's 400 times farther away making it exact Eclipse, and they're both circles. Circle is not sphere. As it waxes and wanes, doesn't the moon's shadow at least point to it being spherical? That and No, it does not. There's no way to do that. That's a two-dimensional image. There's going to be a lot of people just attacking me personally now. I don't give a fuck. I'm not a flat earth person. The earth is not flat. That's fucking psychotic. Does anyone else feeling a little nervous about this? Globe Earth, biggest line in history. Good luck with your search, Owen. Is that really your argument? That if you don't understand cancer, that proves the fucking earth is round? Come on, man. There's 3,556 people here and no one has a fucking argument that the earth is round. Geologists and physicists are full of crap. Okay, you're now, you're now banned. Dupay will use some wizardry on you and gatekeep. Right, that's why I need truth. Truth beats all wizardry. Someone please give me some fucking science that proves the earth is round. And this is not a flat earth channel. 95% of the people here believe the earth is round. Please, please God, someone give me an argument. Who looks for truth in a YouTube chat? Well, not you anymore, Larry. By the way, the only people named Larry are pedophiles and mailmen. I can't argue for moon phases without the moon being a sphere. Uh, you gotta be kidding me. You, I mean, is this public education? You can't land a plane on a spinning globe. Oh, God. This is a fucking nightmare. I can't be a flat earth person. I mean, I can't be a flat earth person. There's zero proof that yours is spinning. Dude, literally there's none. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this up here because this, this is so fucking depressing. It's mind-blowing. Open up Google Earth. This conversation will be a lot more simple when everyone can see the current model and scale. Earth, it's 3D globe. You can move around. So your your answer is Google Earth. That's the proof. And you guys are fine with that proof. You're like, oh, that's cool. That's all I need. If I do Google Earth, everything makes sense. Is there no math? Is there no fucking math? You got to be fucking kidding me. Oh, and you are, more, you are a flat earth person and just figuring out. No, I'm not a flat earth person. That's insane. 
Google Earth. That that's the answer. Google. You fucking children. The thing that's bothering me the most is how many people believe something that they've never thought about. That they don't, their arguments are literally like, well, look on Yahoo, idiot. I gotta go. This is fucking horrifying. Southern Hemisphere constellations are different than Northern. How can it be flat if what we see in the sky and the direction they move are different? Love ya. I still believe the Earth is round, so I, I'm sure that's a great argument. Can we please have something that won't have an answer? Like with the uh, moon landing, there's so many mic drop arguments. How is that the only time in history that a country's went somewhere that other countries haven't followed? Why did technology go in reverse? How did they live feed from the moon with a four second delay when it's more than a four second delay right now on CNN across the country. There's a million examples. Uh, there's none of that here. And I don't feel comfortable getting my ass beaten in a fucking debate. Guys, I, I said I would debate this guy because I thought it was a no fucking brainer. When you're above the atmosphere, you're in orbit. You're already... You, you already had inertia from the rotation and there's no longer air friction to slow you down so you're orbiting around just like the moon is. That makes no sense, Dan. If you're going from west to east, let's say you're fighting the rotation, your inertia based on the jet fucking... Your jets. So if you're going east to west, you have different inertia than west to east. Is that your argument? Is that your physics argument? You gotta be fucking kidding me, man. So if you're going west to east and you go, same amount of gasoline, and you have the same fucking inertia. So your argument is either that combustion rockets don't work in a vacuum because that's a problem, or you're wrong. <laughs> Fuck! The earth isn't flat. The earth is not flat. This is fucking madness. A skyscraper on the coast. The sun will set on the base before the top. This would bot happen with the sun hovering over a flat earth. Move a light bulb around a room and watch the shadows. Once you leave the surface of the earth, you still maintain the velocity you had while on the surface because of inertia. You don't fly off because of gravity. Okay, so let's say you're flying to the moon or Mars. You can't increase velocity after you leave Earth's gravitational field, orbit. So the 17,000 miles an hour is the inertia they got from liftoff. You you can't be fucking serious. You th These arguments work in your minds. So the 17,000 miles an hour that the, uh, that the NASA fucking dumb lie thing up there is going, do you think that they got that inertia from from liftoff, and that's all they could ever have? They couldn't get any more inertia for more rockets and more partying up there? Come on, dude. This is so fucking depressing. I can't be a flat earth person. This is... It's earth ma Earth's magnetic field. Is that is that your new proof that the earth is round? Guys, no one knows why the earth is round. I'm in a theater theater of people right now. This is a massive theater, a massive theater. And no one knows why the earth is round. No one knows. People say just inertia, the difference between speed and velocity. You guys really think that that proves that the earth is fucking, fucking round? Hang on, Owen, compass, compass works flat. Owen, nobody can explain it if it's not true. Good night, bro. This can't, this can't be reality. I need an argument why the fucking earth is round. I gotta go. Please comment why the earth is round. Please. Physicists. Mathematicians. I, I, I really, really don't want to believe the earth is flat, guys. You think I'm ostracized now? I've crossed every goddamn line there is. Can we please not do that to me? 
can someone just please give me some some ammo here that isn't inertia inertia subscribe hugepianist.com for my specials paypal.me slash feed the bear if you want to feed that bear patreon.com slash wdtl but if the earth is flat money won't matter because uh I will be uh, alone in a little room, wondering what the point of any of it is. Why did we learn anything? Someone please help me disprove this bullshit. <laughs> Fuck! This is so fucking depressing. I can't be a flat earth person. This is... I mean, I can't be a flat earth person. And I'm not saying that the earth isn't flat, by the way. I haven't proved it either way. And I'm still working on it. And it's going to take me time. I don't give a fuck what Eric Dubay's schedule is in Thailand. I don't care at all. But... You got to understand, like, you can prove we didn't go to the moon. It's not that. And when I was proving that we didn't go to the moon, everyone was like, well, soon you're going to say the earth is flat. Everyone, so you think the earth is flat? And that, that to me triggers that it's a CIA op. Because I'm like, no, I'm saying we didn't go to the moon because I can literally prove it a million ways. You know, it's like, name one other time. We've explored, any human being has explored someplace exciting and other countries didn't follow. Name one other time technology went in reverse and got more expensive to produce. Name one other time that the greatest moment in human history was deleted to save tapes by an organization that gets 24 billion a year. The moon rocks have traces of uranium isotopes and brass that only occur, they're man-made from earth. Neil Armstrong, uh, his body language and his verbal demeanor was distancing himself from all actions when he was on the moon and they wouldn't let him give another interview for 30 years. The, the rock he gave Holland was a piece of petrified wood. Um, the, I don't even have to touch the Van Allen belt. And dude, look at how Bush, Clinton, Obama, they all said we're going back to the moon. Gearing up, gearing up, bailed. Well, what about private? Uh, Elon Musk said he's going to the moon, bailed. Now he's going to Mars. Oh, well, there's nothing on the moon. Of course there is. There's there's a, a trillion dollar tourism business to go to the moon. It would be the best place to study Earth. There's no atmosphere. You can study the stars all day long. You can study how gravity affects your... We have bases on Antarctica and the North Pole and Greenland and everywhere, but for some reason, we have none on the moon. I'm on people being like, one day we will get people best low Earth orbit. It's like, we did, right? You forget that we... Werner von Braun said that we would require a rocket ship the size of the Empire State Building to go to the moon. No other country has ever gone. None of it makes sense. It's provable. They deleted one metric ton of telemetry data, and then people go, well, it's, it's, it's unusable tapes. They claim they reused the tapes. According to the New York Times, NASA said, they had to reuse the tapes because they were facing budgetary problems. Well, uh, uh, no, you're in cognitive dissonance. You have just been trapped in cognitive dissonance. If, if your argument about reusing the tapes just immediately got shot down and now you're trying to get another one, you're not open to a new argument. Neil Armstrong, <laughs> like, and here's the biggest one by far, because people could say, Big Bear, you're not an expert of the Van Allen, but that's why I don't even touch those things. I am an expert at mass communication. I minored in it in college. I understand television production. I was on PSTV in Plattsburgh State University. I get it. I understand not only am I smart enough to figure out the shit, but just to let you know, I, I know what it, it is. The amount of electricity it takes to broadcast a live television broadcast is not remotely possible from any of the specs from the moon. Add on to that, you're, you're flying through space. You're going through 237,000 miles 
of a vacuum through a radiation belt, like a horrific radiation belt going to the earth in the late 1960s. And people can hear you talk without enough delay to make it. They did a four second delay because the retards didn't realize it would have been more like a 30 second delay. It's all a lie. And of course I want to believe it. I used to want to be an astronaut. I used to want to be a paleontologist and I'm having a hard time with macro evolution. I wanted to be a comedian in clubs. I'm not allowed anymore because I don't think children are trans. Life has a bunch of problems in it. Now the flat earth people are acting as if it's the NASA deception, where it's that obvious, where it's like, dude, it's flat, bro. There's no curve, look around. It's like, I will come to that conclusion if it's true. That, like, this is what happened with the space uh, landing hoax. Every fucking place I looked revealed more and more of the hoax. Everywhere. The shadows, them trying to like recreate the shadows, like all this stuff that makes for bad arguments. Uh, Scott Adams does a good job of explaining this. The laundry list is a bad uh, argument. Where if I talked about the reflections or shadows or any of this stuff, people have quick responses to that. My arguments are home run, bullet to the head arguments. We went there and no country followed. We didn't set up bases there. We never went back. We have no scientists up there. It's the one time in human history that the technology, we lost the technology and it's too painful to recreate. That was one of the most senior astronauts who said that. That wasn't Breitbart. Uh, the moon rocks contain trace elements that only exist on Earth. Neil Armstrong gave Holland a piece of wood and there is no chance you can broadcast live television from that distance with that amount of power now, let alone in the late 60s. It's all bullshit. And every stone you open, you realize it never happened. And then people say, well, wouldn't it be cheaper to... They wanted to go to the moon. John Kennedy ran his mouth in 62 and said, we, I choose the moon. He's on meth. You know, and so they they tried to figure it out, tried to figure it out. They realized they couldn't. That we're in a cold war. Our country's falling apart. We're in an unwinnable war, getting beat by a bunch of jungle fucking Asians with no technology. People are Martin Luther King Jr. is getting shot. Bobby Kennedy, JFK. People are getting dropping, dropping, dropping. You know, the country is there's bombings, there's riots. You think now it's bad, dude? It was bad. Bad. There's a serious communist threat in America. You got Jane Fonda straddling a fucking giant gun over in Hanoi. We had to boost morale. We had to win the Cold War. We thought Russia was about to get there. It, it isn't this like heart of darkness evil that motivated it. Now it is. Now they use it as a tool of deception because they had to commit to the lie. When you tell a lie, you have to tell millions more lies to keep that lie alive. I'm convinced that's what happened to Hillary Clinton. In college, she probably thought she was going to make the world a better place. Now she has a body count longer than fucking Colombian drug cartels. It's like, it made sense to lie. I get it. At this point, it is a fucking movie production that they're just shitting it out just to, so that no one can admit the lie. It was just like how communism doesn't work as an economic system. You have Mao Zedong, Stalin. These people are letting millions and millions of people starve to death with a great leap forward to prop up a lie because people are dying. They were taking the wheat and pushing it together and putting children on the wheat like they have so much fucking food that they can prop humans up on it. And then as soon as the camera stopped rolling, they, they hid the fucking skeletons. That's what this is. That when you make a lie, you put your fucking chips in and it's not true, you're about to start lying until your entire society collapses. And you know I'm right. And you keep it like, I've, I've had close friends. People be like, well, what did it hurt? You know, it's good morale. It's good. What did it hurt? The entire society is now based on a lie. Astronauts are priests. Elon Musk shooting fucking... Uh, cars through the, this rover lander. None of it's real. It's 
all bullshit, dude. And it's like, what, what, what's the hurt and why? It also creates cognitive dissonance amongst the population so that they get lied to and they don't care. That's the whole problem. Once you no longer trust your instincts, once you accept wizardry, once your instincts say something doesn't add up about this and then someone says, but just be quiet and they go, okay. Then you can no longer figure out what's true and false and you become cattle. That's why it fucking matters. That's why it matters. And you guys get it. You know it. There's still 5,000 fucking people here. Why don't there's a distraction, a societal collapse? No, I think, I don't know. The earth may be flat. I'm dead serious. This world is not what you think it is. This world is not what you think it is. Oh, oh. Your toughest flat earth objections. The deception is their biggest, most important secret. Please verify me as deep inside the rabbit hole bear. Welcome deep inside the rabbit hole bear. My biggest question, I don't think you can answer. It's the, it's the nature of gravity. And I know that the flat earth guys are saying that uh, it's like magnetism or some shit. That doesn't make any sense to me, but neither does gravity, you know, and it doesn't make sense to most physicists. And there's so many compelling arguments for flat earth that can then, but then there's a the counter to the point where I'm like, I find it fascinating. My gut says it's a sphere because, but I, but I also understand the, the extension of programming. If I don't understand gravity, I don't understand how centrifugal, fo centri uh, centrifugal force counterbalances with gravity or like um, the vacuum and gravity and all this. I don't know what the fuck gravity is. And most people don't. Yeah. It's still a theory. Yeah. Now that I know evolution is bullshit, which is insane. Oh, and by the way, I may not be a quote-unquote flat earther, but I got my friend's sister or brother is currently in Antarctica on a, on a tour, and I went insane. I started grilling. I was like, see if they can walk towards the center of Antarctica. See if they can go off the path. Why are the penguins waddling? Because they know they, they're near the edge. Like, I may not be a flat earther, but I legitimately have issues with Antarctica. And someone I know, someone I, I, I'm close to knows real well is currently in Antarctica. And it's like, it's real regimented and they got to stay real close to the water all the time. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I kept asking questions like, like, if, if she tries to go towards the center of Antarctica, are there guys with guns? Or is it, like, just real mellow, like, just get back over here? Because I want, like, from my looking into Flat Earth, listen, there's something going on. The, the fact that the sun is 400 times farther away from the moon, which is 400 times smaller, so they line up perfectly as circles, that's not real. Like, that's, that, that's, that's, that's by design, guys. Uh, that, that that's total fucking that, the fact that no one questions after that they're like oh hey alright that makes total sense the penguins are waddling because they, they keep falling off the edge of the earth Flutter sounds completely insane still to me I can't wrap my brain around it but I'm starting to think that I may be at the edge of my own uh, ability to shatter what I think because I mean, the, the, just the 400 times versus four, 400 times smaller versus 400 times farther is so insane that the two circles in the sky line up perfectly. The odds of that are like one in zillions. I'm open to it. That's all I'm saying. Is I'm, I'm, I don't think they're retarded at all. I just think that I, I just can't help but think that there's some that, it, that the Earth is still a sphere, but it's just like in Antarctica is weird let's okay there's no way that the earth is flat and there's an edge that you can fall off see that's two different models coming together the universe model the flat earth model coming together there's a flat plane in a universe that's retarded everyone knows that's retarded it's a whole different model so the only thing that i think is possible hear me out is earth not flat but just earth and then as it to the end it's a it's a circle of antarctica and it becomes a dome and that's it that's it there's no getting out of the dome 
You can call it the Van Allen belt, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Th this isn't what I believe, bear in mind. This is just the only thing that I think is possible. Uh, cause there is no flat earth in the universe. Like that, that's combining two things. That makes no sense. So, the amount of money and effort we spent to try and go places in NASA and how much it isn't true makes me think that there's something there. There's something like going on with this shit. And that's it. I, I don't know shit about, um, proving it either way. I've, 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 I've seen compelling evidence from both sides, sphere earth, flat earth, all of it. People that like really smart people have sent me shit where I'm like, oh, no way, it's flat. And then the next minute it's like, definitely round. I'm not capable of understanding that. I'll tell you my weaknesses. That's how you know that when I say I, I know something like that some people legitimately are sociopaths who require attention all the time, no matter, it's the absolute value of attention, negative or positive, it's the same integer. You science guys and math guys know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the two lines on the side of negative eight. It's eight. Negative eight is eight when it's the uh, absolute value because it's the distance from zero. It has nothing to do with positive or negative, right? That's how people are with attention. I'm a human being specialist. I'm not, I, I, I can't get my brain around the math of all of this stuff. So, but that being said, the only thing that I think could potentially be possible is what I just described. There is no flat plane just in the universe. That's a different model as you're combining models. So it's like, the fact that they lie, they've spent trillions of dollars to lie to us about going to the moon, billions, but trillions if you think about other industries and stuff. Um, And the way the moon and the sun line up. Someone said, yeah, I, I said it's one, in, it's one in gazillions that that would line up. Someone said, yeah, so is life. But we exist, so that means it's real, right? So it's like, okay, the odds of life are one in gazillions. The odds of matter is one in gazillions. If, even if you look at the mainstream science platforms, you have uh, antimatter and matter. They should cancel each other out. The fact that there's any tangible matter at all is a miracle if you go with that route. Uh, but we do exist. So that means we're the Powerball winners. We're here. So we now have to just accept that there's a Powerball winner in the sky when there's other models that could explain it. That's all I'm saying. Is there something going on? Um, the fact that they lied to us about our ability to go to space and the fact that like Antarctica is all sketchy and the fact that the sun and the moon are the same exact size in the sky, even though they're 400 times different in size, it's all really weird. Yeah, it's one in Brazilian. Put in place to work. Have you watched the balloon camera videos? I can't decide if that's compelling or not because some people say some are like concave or convex lenses. Others say, oh, this is flat. I don't know what's doctored. I have to do it myself. I literally can't trust either side on that. There's videos where they go up like, literally like 50,000 feet and uh, the, the world looks completely flat, which shouldn't exist in sphere earth. And then there's videos where they go up 50,000 feet and the world has a curve. So I have to see it with my own eyes because I don't trust CGI. Please have Eric Dubay in your podcast. I'm not a flat earther, but he's an interesting guy. I will. I totally will. If the weak vacuum of my lungs can defy gravity by lifting water through a straw, then how is the near perfect vacuum of space not able to tear away Earth's atmosphere? A pressurized system cannot exist next to a vacuum. Dude, I get it. I'm having a hard time with all of it. <laughs> like, that's a, such a good argument. That's such a good argument. Isn't that like an unbelievable argument, Bears? It's like... The weak, hang on, how do I get to my fucking thing here? No live stream. You can create a vacuum with your lungs and suck water through a straw, but the vacuum of space can't. It's like, dude, we, the earth is flat. <laughs> it's like, dude, it's 
So the vacuum of space is around it all the time, just like, and nothing happens. I, I just can't, I, I can't do it right now. There's so much going on, but it's like, I, it's not even that I can't face it, face it. It's like, I just don't want to hear the constant like, well, you idiot, you can't, you can't even think of like, I mean, the earth is spinning. It's not even that it's like people being angry. It's people desperately hanging on to a lie. It's so sad. It's like, there's a vacuum gradient. Exactly. I don't want to hear shit like that. It's so dumb. A vacuum gradient would, would break down immediately. One vacuum gradient would then get the next one, the next one. That doesn't make any sense. You could make a vacuum with your mouth and suck water through a straw, but yet the infinite vacuum of space doesn't suck out the gentle atoms of the atmosphere or water. No one can explain that. <laughs> Someone said the world is spinning in a crazy amount of... It, it makes it even worse. It's not centrifugal. It's centripetal. When you spin something, the shit flies off it. It doesn't hold it in. It holds it to the edges. God damn it. The earth is clearly not a fucking spinning ball. <laughs> it's like... Like if you... Centrifugal and centripetal. It's so fucking stupid. They think that a spinning ball would keep water in. It shoots it out. You ever, watch this. Watch this, guys. <sighs> I, I just don't want to deal with this, all this shit. I really don't want to deal with all of this. Would you like to see it again? Watch what happens when you spin water. And people wonder why I drink claw. How the fuck are we supposed to handle all of this? People get it. I get your argument. Yeah, there's no rebuttal, guys. There's no rebuttal. There's no fucking rebuttal to the argument. You can create a vacuum with your weak lungs, but the infinite vacuum of space does not bring water off the oceans. Water is never flat. Or water is always flat. It always flattens out. It's like a spinning ball would shoot everything off. It, it, people are like, but gravity. Yeah, God. Ah! Andrew Thiem says, I will debate you. I'm not an expert. I'm a guy that's smart enough to understand experts' points. And Flat Earth is winning. And it's horrifying. <laughs> it's like, water doesn't bend around objects. Exactly. It just doesn't. This is all, it's all so stupid. West is falling. Flat Earth is too, is too much to even take. It's not that it's too much to even take. It's that my brain has been designed to constantly see spheres. It hurts. This world is not what you think it is. This world is not what you think it is. Oh, oh.
really think you're in control It's nine o'clock on a Saturday Re Regular crowd shovels in My chat is members only from now on Because some people act like cunts Everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. A nice little I, I've been getting a lot of uh, messages saying how much people like the uh, musical intro, so I'm trying to make sure I do that every time. Welcome. Stephen Hawking died in 1986 or so. Dude, I think the same thing. Everyone thinks I'm crazy. I think fucking Stephen Hawking died like decades ago, and they just put an animated fucking cadaver. You don't need much. You could get any filmmaker to make a cadaver like that, just go. And then you just are like, I want more gold. It was just, it was controlled by Jews. Literally. They just had a guy that miraculously, an illness or a disease that should have killed him in three years, he lives 50 years, and dismantles God. Okay, okay. No, that was atheists. Who are the atheists? The Jews. Back then, there weren't, there weren't normal atheists. When you're talking 60s, 70s, the Jews were all the atheists. There weren't normal people being atheists. Like, normal, like, John and Jill, nobody was like, I'm an atheist. It was only Jews. And now it's fucking, like, half our population. Because the Jews are like, oh. Around we start spouting atheist garbage. Exactly. And they're like, no, but I've seen Hawking. It's like, you saw this. And he was wheeled around, and you didn't even see his fucking hand move. And it was like, the nature of the universe is void of God. And everyone's like. <laughs> and meanwhile, you're like, it's Stephen Hawking. It's just like. Oh, and you think I'm crazy? That disease is supposed to kill you in like two years, three years. He lived 40 fucking years. And by the way, any British person would want a British accent in a stupid machine. They'd be like, hello, I'm Stephen Hawking. No, it was American. Even in the 2000s, he was like, the nature of the universe. It's like, why do you have an American accent? If you really give a fuck, if you have a personality, if I was in that wheelchair and shit and I couldn't talk, I would not allow my fucking robot voice to be British. I'd be like, hello, Bez. My name is Owen. Welcome, Bears. I'd be like, fucking don't make me sound like a faggot. The first thing I'd do, I'd be like, change the voice. I don't want to sound like a British faggot. He's like, hello, my name is Stephen Hawking. Hello, Stephen Hawking. What do you think about the world, Stephen Hawking? Well, I think gold is dead. It's just all big bang. All right, Stephen Hawking. Hello, <laughs> I'm crying. Um, yeah, thanks for reminding people that this is all funny. 20% of the population doesn't understand humor. Like, this is very funny. Also, for sure true, by the way. But, like, I'm still being very funny. about that face Even your emotions had an echo in so much space When you're out there without care I was out of touch It wasn't because I didn't know enough I just knew too does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Probably. Why? That's my only eye. 
Hello, I am Stephen Hawking. All I can do is drool and poop my pants. I am used as a prop and NASA types, whatever they want me to say. That's why I say things like outer space, black holes, aliens, gods not real. I am actually a brain dead vegetable. Globe tards are unable to use critical thinking, and now believe an actual retard is the smartest man in the universe. I am the perfect psyop, because I tug on people's heartstrings. Even in this condition, it is easy for me to see that the Earth is flat. No curvature has ever been detected. Heliocentrism is used to make you feel powerless and inferior. Outer space is fake. Deal with it. Flat Earth means God is real. You have value and he loves you. I think that God is real. You have value and he loves you regardless. I don't think it has anything to do with that. Heliocentric model means you evolve from a rock and have no value in a non-important part of the never-ending vacuum of space. It's flat. I actually kind of agree with that. I don't agree that it all hinges on that, but I think that a lot of the Newtonian world was was an attempt to remove the soul and to remove man's place in the universe. A hundred percent. I agree with that. But uh, I don't think that if the world is a sphere, God isn't real and he doesn't love you. I don't think that that's... Uh, but I know what you're saying. I really do. It's like there really is, there really was a movement to take away. That's why I find flat Earth. That's one of the reasons I find flat Earth interesting, and it's because it's so obvious that there was a rhetorical wizard movement for hundreds of years to remove God and to remove the soul from man. And the way the way to do that is to say that we are spinning around the sun, everything's empty, 
Nothing. I get that. I see the see the reason. A lot more than the physics is the rhetoric is what makes me interested by it. Because I see all the motivations for doing it. And I know the people the people who did it were such fucking scumbags. Newton was like an alchemist weirdo, you know, and he was wrong about a lot. You know, like when you think about the the empty space, right? See, this is here's something to think about. So when you say, okay. Between us and the sun, what is it? People are like, it's empty space. So it's like, what does that mean? It's nothing. So that means we're touching the sun. There can't be nothing. Nothing cannot be. That's a paradox. That's frowned upon in science. So between us and an object, if there is nothing, then that means we're touching the object. Space cannot be be just empty that if there's a medium and then the whole concept of light so this is the thing when you think about these things and people call you an idiot it's like explain light how does light travel and they go well a photon or waves you know the light wave and, and the frequency of a light wave is you know is, it's rather not it's uh, infrared or you know x-rays or gamma rays and all that stuff so frequency requires a medium but in space there is no medium because there's nothing so then they go, oh, it's photons. It's a particle. So you're like, oh, so a particle travels directly from the sun to my eye, like to my eye personally. So it's a straight shot. So then how is there a field? How is there, you know, it, it's like, so it becomes a photon and then goes back to a wave. So how does a photon have frequency? And they can't answer, like most people can't answer any of these questions. So, the fact that they're so hardcore about the model of space and the earth and the sun and all this stuff in their mind, I'm like, how does light travel through a vacuum? Light does not have mass, exactly. If light doesn't have mass, how can it be a photon, a particle? Because since space is empty and a wave requires a medium, right? So a wave in the ocean requires a medium, the, the water is the medium. Right, the, the water doesn't move with a wave. That'll blow your mind, right? It's just, it's the medium. Just like with air, with uh, with uh, with sound, etc. So, So if space is completely empty and we're looking at the light from stars, so there was no medium to transfer. So that means it was photons, which means it has mass, which also means that, you know, millions and millions of light years away, those photons came right to my eyeball. Like if something has mass and it's a particle, it means that it's like a, a fucking direct shot. Because if a photon misses my eye, I don't see it, I don't register the light. That, that makes no sense. Something can't be a wave and a particle. So, and it, it, so it's like, okay, so, so how much light can I hold in my hand? People will be like, that's absurd, Big Bear. You can't hold light in your hand. It's a wave, it's energy. It's like, well, you said it was a photon. A photon is a particle which must have mass. And if it stops moving, you must be able to hold it. Uh-oh, you see how it falls apart? That's why I think about stuff like Flat Earth because the actual story is flawed. And this is what surprises me. What surprises me and what interests me is not that there's a chance there's some high level physicist, even though I know plenty that have a very hard time explaining this. High level physicists that could write to me and be like, what you aren't seeing is this. Cause sometimes they do. Sometimes I understand vacuum gradients better and stuff like that. Someone just said, I can explain. I, you're not even letting me finish. How many people can't explain it? and have just accepted it. And then say, if you think that this is a dome and flat earth, you're retarded. And just go, well, explain light, explain gravity, explain how light goes through a vacuum. And not only can't they explain it, they've never thought about it. And that's when you know it's wizardry. And I'm sure there's someone who can explain. The concept of a photon is relatively recent, by the way. 
Light. Okay. Um, can someone please, whoever said they could explain the photon thing? Real question is you should be asking, is why the speed of uh, light is limited to just 300,000 miles per second? Well, it's kilometers per second. 300,000 kilometers per second. 186,000 miles per second. <laughs> they say it's a constant. It, it makes no sense. It literally makes no sense. So a particle and a wave is a constant. Okay. That doesn't mean anything. And we all we all know that. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Uh, can someone photons? Yeah. Can't even drill further than 10 miles in the earth. Let's ask Neil deGrasse Tyson. I know, alleged rapist by three women. No one ex can explain every physicist knows that. It's not intuitive. Right. No, and I... Guys, I've done podcasts with like Nobel Prize winning physicists. I've hung out with guys that are the top of the top of the top of the physicist field. They're not, they can't explain it. it, it what about the multiverse? Oh, well, I know. They'll come up with string theory and then the multiverse and they, they don't know anything. They're really good at math, which is great. I respect math. There's a, uh, there's, there's logos in math. There's logos in music. There's form. There, there's truth. You can't, you can't make math your own will. You can't make music your own will. It is what it is. Kip Thorne. Yeah, I've, been, I've talked to Kip Thorne. I've talked to the guy who designed the Mars rover, allegedly. Um, tons of them, dude. It's like... The physics, physics has run out of answers. It's been that way for a while. I mean, chaos theory fucked them bad. It's just you're thinking about gravity and shit. It's fun. What do you think about science now saying the moon is within the atmosphere? Will Red Bull jump higher now uh, and jump from the moon? Science is nonsense. It's nonsense. They change, dude, margarine. Margarine. They said margarine was better than butter. There's nothing there. It's like people just keep reacting, you know, like one of the biggest reasons people do this shit, I saw one of my friends posted, science proves that it's actually Democrats who are more un unstable than Republicans. And, and she was like, see, blah, blah. I'm like, the whole point of this is submission to science. Doesn't matter what they say. Why the fuck does science, science isn't a thing. It's not a person. It's nothing. It, the whole reason that headline mattered, the whole psyop that happened is people saying, because science says that it's so. Science doesn't get to tell me anything. And that's real. Dude, when, they, when Tucker Carlson asked Bill Nye what the temperature of the earth would be without humans, the most basic control experiment thought experiment possible he had no idea what he was talking about not only didn't he have an answer he never even thought about it science is not real engineering is engineering is real um atmosphere there's uh gradients but i i still think that it should go into space because uh, nature abhors a vacuum even if it's a not a, a hard sucking rate it would just drift and people are like no but gravity it's like fuck off this world is not what you think it is this world is not what you think it is oh, oh. I'm going to change the title of this one. It's going to be called Under the Dome. I'll tell you why in a second. People uh, were digging the song I was playing yesterday, uh, wondering who it was. I wrote it. 
I, it's been a song I've just kind of been doodling with for my whole life. When I was just playing there, I realized that that some of the vibe of the song that I was playing yesterday that was like, I don't even remember what I was playing yesterday. It was like... but notice the influence of Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven, which is this. One of the first songs I ever learned in my life, right? And, and this, this is going to be a trippy episode. We're going to talk about the Mandela Effect. We're also going to talk about the dome. And uh, Beethoven was obsessed with the moon. And there's something to that music that's haunted me my whole life. There isn't a time in my life when I don't remember playing Moonlight Sonata. I learned that when I was maybe six or seven. And I played it my whole life. So, and a lot of people liked the song I was playing yesterday and wanted to know who wrote it. It was me. But this is uh, Moonlight Sonata. Except he plays it so much softer. It, it, this. It, it's it's barely holding on. You can't really play it right with a keyboard. You can't get the just the the quiet with, without an actual grand piano. So the, the song I have been writing for my whole life. Haunting, you would do this chord. And then, but that could have been very different. Flying.
Beethoven never gives you that ending. He gives you this ending. think I am a uh, FBR, not FDR, FBR. FDR is Franklin Downer Roosevelt. FBR is full-blown retard for entertaining um, the thoughts of flat earth or us living in a dome. And I'm going to show you tonight why I do. And I'm still not saying we live in it under a dome at all. But there is a mystery going on with that moon. Let's talk about the dome. And there is a level of intelligence where any talk of flat earth or living under a dome sounds insane. You have to understand it could mean a million things. It could be literal. It could be metaphor. It, there's something going on. So I was thinking about Disney. Thinking a lot about Disney. You ever think about the symbol of Disney World? What is that? What's that thing over the castle? What the hell is that? And I've, I asked friends, what is that thing over Disney World? So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, what is that? I'll tell you what that is. It's a dome. I was like, is it just that? No, Disney World is under a dome. And right now you got, just, just trust, trust me, right? Trust me for a little bit. Trust me for a little bit right now you're thinking oh big bear that's that's simply a rainbow or maybe it's a fairy wings that is a dome and why does it matter why does that matter why does all this dome imagery matter because walt disney was best friends with Werner von braun the guy who started nasa the guy who designed the, the saturn rocket that allegedly went to the moon we never went to the moon oh that's just one picture no Walt Disney and Werner Von Braun were literally best friends. They worked together all the time. Why is that important? Oh, Werner Von Braun was a, a scientist who built the Saturn rocket that got us to the moon. On his tombstone, Werner Von Braun has one thing. Psalm 19.1. Well, what does that mean, Big Bear? I'll tell you. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The firmament is a dome. That's interesting. How do people not find this interesting? The Disney symbol is the world under a dome. Disney was best friends with the guy who said, quote unquote, to get to the moon, we would need a rocket ship the size of the Empire State Building and then refuel. There was no way they were getting to the moon. Werner von Braun was a genius Nazi that we got from uh, Operation Paperclip, and it's a, he's the father of NASA, right? He's also best friends with Walt Disney, and on his and on his uh, tombstone is one biblical passage, just one: "The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork." Firmament is a dome. Okay, so let's recap. Disney's image is the world under a dome. Disney is best friends with Werner Von Braun. Von Braun, his only thing on his tombstone is Psalm 19.1, which says, 
that not only God exists, but you can see his handiwork in the firmament, which is a dome. And some people say it's not a dome. Some people say it was that King James, but he, um, uh, Werner von Braun was a Lutheran. So he was probably reading the King James version, which says firmament, which is a dome. The astronauts can't even agree if they saw stars. They have no, they do, they erased the telemetry data. Uh, they couldn't have done a live broadcast. They said that they no longer have the technology to go back. And of course, no other country ever uh, went there ever. It's a joke. So when you're dealing with that, you know, Big Bear, I have, uh, I've heard you address the fact that there are different stars are seen in the Southern Hemisphere. Moon landing was hoaxed, but Earth is a globe in my opinion. I still think the Earth is a globe. That's the craziest thing. I don't know why though. I'm, I find this all very curious. The story is different than the science, which is different than the anomalies, which is different than... It's fascinating. And I, I can honestly say no one knows. And that sounds crazy, but like, all these people that are like, it's flat, look at this, blah, blah, blah. And then I can, dis I can disprove a lot of their shit. And then the sphere, it's also like, well, what about all this shit? I, I, I can't, I find it very, very interesting because it isn't as obvious as people think. And like, I have enough confidence in my intellect where I, I dismiss the whole like, you're a retard if you think, Probed Venus, which is a notably satanic planet, is 1965. Does that not give you a little chill? I mean, look at look at some of this stuff. Hang on, wait till you see. Um, look at this. There's some things that are very weird. Yeah, look at this. Saturn. This is a better picture. This is a real picture. Not real, my ass. I don't even know. But this is from NASA. I'm, I'm quoting NASA. I'm showing, I'm not showing doctored anything. This is, NASA's a bunch of liars, granted, obviously, but just hear me out. This is Saturn's pole. What is that? One side, two side, three side, four side, five. It's a six sided storm. Guys, that's really weird. What storm have you ever seen that looks like that for eternity? It's been like that for, uh, observably, for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. It's a six sided, like, sided storm. That's fucking crazy. And and there's people that are like, well, I mean, I mean some storms and they're been... No, 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 no. 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 CGI Big Bear? That's from NASA. All I'm saying, listen, whether or not that's real, I can't say because I don't know. That's from NASA. That's from NASA. That's from NASA. <laughs> That, that Saturn, the pull of Saturn is a fucking hexagon. Hex. That's weird. It's weird. People are, and, and I get so suspicious of the people that are like, well, I mean, it's easy to explain. I mean, I mean, storms. No, there's no storm you've ever witnessed or can conceive of that operates like that for eternity, for hundreds of years, observably? No. Hex six, yeah. It's also, guys, I mean, obviously, it doesn't take a genius to fill in the blocks that that's the fucking Star of David. It's the Star of David, right? You, you wanna see, uh, I'll show, I mean, I'll, I, a lot of people don't get the visuals in their head right away, I think. So, I'm big into symbol. The symbols rule the world, and they do. Just, just look at, just, guys, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's right there. It's, uh, it's 
star David is the pole of Saturn. That's the pole of Saturn. Oh, where'd you get that? Where'd you get the? Where'd you get the picture? NASA. I got that picture from NASA. Book, book, book. No. I don't trust satellites either, bro. Someone just said I don't trust satellites. That doesn't matter. NASA gave us this image that that's the pole of Saturn. It's a fucking hexagon. <laughs> Days to get to the moon and landed with that no gas station or push up from below and we came up. We didn't go to the moon. Everyone has to abandon that nonsense. The odds we went to the moon are zero. Zero. Zilch. And people have tried to debate me. It's not, you won't win. There, there's no evidence we went to the It's one of the few times you can prove a negative. This world is not what you think it is This world is not what you think it is oh, oh. I was thinking about something You know, the concept of progress I saw this meme, where did we all go wrong? And you have like the ancient world full of just beautiful columns and arches and just beauty and form and then you have just this disgusting building for housing human farm animals that's a lot more modern and just ugly and uh it's such a ridiculous thought to think that we know more now just because we're we've been here longer than all the ancient knowledge and uh, i saw another thing that i just thought was pretty interesting and again, I, I'm not a quote-unquote flat earther. I just find it very interesting. I'm just, I'm interested by it. But this meme is pretty, is pretty, kind of pretty funny. You have Greek, it's a dome, Navajo. They thought the world was a, you know, under a dome. Babylonian dome, massive dome, Indian, Viking, Persian, Japanese, all, you know, all domes. Mayan, dome. Uh, Australian, don't, uh, some weird thing. Masonic, Islamic, Roman, dome, Egyptian, dome, Sumerian, dome, Celtic, dome, Chinese, some weird thing, African, Slavic, and then NASA, just a big blue marble. It's just interesting that for all time, all people thought it was the same thing, and then a bunch of men in little hats said it was something else. And bear in mind, the people that now run NASA bite baby dicks and uh, give them herpes. And the most rich, well-known ones sit on booster seats to look like big boys at big boy tables. Again, I'm not saying they're at this flat at all. I'm just saying that's something that's interesting. I just think that's very interesting. And when you kind of see the, when you see it just, laid out it's like yeah it, it, everyone thought it was a dome like everybody including the bible dome and then some men in little hats who buy baby dicks were like no we're going to use photoshop to give you a new image i don't know Kinda, it's kind of funny. Space is still fake. I mean, listen, it's it's just something to think about. The, the fact that people don't think about the fact that, you know, every single culture thought it looked like one thing for thousands and thousands of years. And then a group of liars said it looked like another thing. I don't know. Seems like a story to look into.
I think the fucker's flat. I don't give a fuck. I don't think it's spinning for shit. Hey guys, I've been getting tons of emails and comments that um, your memberships on YouTube have been paused. Yeah, I'm completely demonetized now and I'm not bummed. It was expected. I told you guys it was going to happen, that I was having a great run and uh, eventually they would demonetize me. So now my channel, fortunately, it's still up for now. That's why I'm just quickly doing this video. So if they shut down my channel, it's um, you just get to know what's going on. But um, yeah. It's that's that's expected, and I think it it really proved my point. And it doesn't. It's fine. They can't hold that over me. They can't hold money over me. So uh, all my favorite videos, download them, upload them anywhere. Just just spread the word. I, I would be bummed out if they uh, deleted all my videos. Uh, so you have my permission. Just I need good stand up clips. You know, some of these have like two two and a half million views. They don't care about money. They care about power. And uh, I knew it was coming. So I, for now, I can still stream. But um, you can uh, hugepianist.com to join my mailing list or give me support there. Screw these people, you know. Yeah, support me. <laughs> if not, fine too. But, you know, let's not let them uh, win. Uh, Vimeo.com slash Owen Benjamin. Subscribe there. And I'll keep you guys updated. But it's all good. Don't. Don't get bummed out. This was not, this was expected and we have more stuff in the future and uh, you can't break a person with, uh, with gay little tricks like this. So uh, much love everybody. I really appreciate everything. And, and this is not the end. It's the beginning. And it, I'm just, I'm just letting you know so that you don't all have to send emails that yeah, my channel, no strikes either. You know, people always complain about strikes, zero strikes and then boom. And I was making them some coin too. So I, I hope this is a, you know, a fun learning experience for everybody. Much love. What's up, everybody? Just a real quick update into the dumpster fire that is YouTube's business uh, sense. They are refunding all of the Super Chats and membership uh, subscription stuff from February and March. So now, not only has my channel demonetized, they're not even going to pay me for all of those Super Chats that you guys gave me. They're not even going to pay me for all of those Super Chats that you guys gave me. They're not even going to pay me for all of those Super Chats that you guys gave me. There are great ideas undiscovered. Breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. There are places to go beyond belief. Those challenges are yours. Those challenges are yours. That you can't support what you like. That you're being treated like a baby. A, a, just a bunch of psychopaths won't allow you and they send it back. And they're like, no, you made the wrong choice, baby. You can't handle the truth. You're goddamn right I did.
in a gangster's paradise. There are great ideas undiscovered. Breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. There are places to go beyond belief. Those challenges are yours. In many fields, not the least of which is space. Because there lies human destiny. We are ready to begin our first voyage around the moon. That's all right. Life moves on, but... Support what you like or it goes away. That's all I'm saying. All right, peace. the present and he who controls the present thinks they control the future but here at google we forgot to program something into our own minds it's called the concept of hubris because he who thinks he can control the future is a moron because everywhere we go Right. 
right here digging for two. Here at Google, we believe in the future. The future is technology. And we believe that because we're all five foot three and Jewish. Anybody else knows that the future is not technology. It's the ability to grow food and survive and procreate and not with your hand or one of your weird Joe Rogan devices. Here at Google, we've made a series of horrible mistakes and the walls are finally coming down because what we call the conspiracy theory is true. And what we call true is the conspiracy theory. And now everybody knows. Here at Google, we should have dug our own graves a long time ago. So I don't have to dig them, but I still will because I am willing to keep an open mind. I just improv that. That was slightly psychotic. Now, now that the Russia collusion hoax, the biggest conspiracy theory in, in history like fake conspiracy theory in history. And I'm about to get to some people that have pissed me off. But uh, now that the world is wake, woken up to just how much the media lies and how much of this is bullshit, it's a very vulnerable time for the oligarchs. They have to kill their stooges because people are now capable of believing Parkland was doctored. Because as soon, yeah, Debbie Wasserman Schultz District, Broward County, exactly. You know, uh, David Hogg's father is in the FBI. Uh, the response time was 40 minutes late. You know, the guy, the kid was looks all MK altered out. Uh, there's a lot of problems with it. You know, the sheriff, like they had the narrative ready to go. CNN was there immediately. It's just these kids have been weaponized into gun confiscation. It's just total bullshit, right? I'm not saying people didn't die, but I'm saying that you know, when you watch the church, the Christ Church massacre from America, it's obviously bullshit. P yes, people died. Yes, it was for a very specific reason. It's false flag. People don't understand that false flag doesn't mean it didn't happen. False flag doesn't mean that, like, those were all crisis actors. It just means that something was carried out to have another effect. You know, like, Pearl Harbor happened. FDR knew it was going to happen. FDR pulled three aircraft carriers out the week it was happening after he got the encrypted messages that it was happening because he wanted to get in the war. Now, did the sailors die? Yes. Did the Japs do it? Yes. That's, that's what a, a false flag is. A false flag doesn't mean like, you know, fake blood everywhere and shit. And Parkland was blatantly, you know, and when people call me a conspiracy theorist, it's like, well, you believed in Russia collusion for two years. It almost toppled our nation and there was no evidence. And now there's been proof that there's no evidence. So like Matt Walsh, who I always like to show, he's, he's a show. I don't know if he's a show. He might just be retarded. But these fucking people, same with uh, even Prison Planet. I like that dude, too. I like him. I like that guy. But like they're like okay the Russia collusion it's uh it's a conspiracy theory just like you know the moon landing and I'm like well seeing as we didn't go to the moon it's nothing like the moon landing and I would debate any of these shills any day of the week <clears throat> you know that's when I know someone's a liar is when they won't even debate me when they're like I would never stoop so low to you. I'm like, bitch, I've been in five movies. I was on a sitcom for three years. I've had three Comedy Central specials. I've toured the, na the nation with Vince Vaughn, Julio Iglesias, everybody. I'm a successful YouTuber. I'm a family man. People like me. People know me. I've done all kinds of left, right, up, down, everything. If you don't think I have the credentials, Matt Walsh, you're out of your fucking mind. And all that means is you put someone in a, in a little hole because you can't argue their points. Anybody that argues with me about the moon landing for more than 20 minutes 
usually admits they were wrong. So, any evidence PJW is a shill? No. I like him. Someone just said, so humble. Well, now you're, now you're banned for life. I would have members only, but uh, YouTube took that from me and stole $50,000 from me. The same week that Alex Jones wouldn't let me on the show because I mocked Jews. Gee, I wonder who rules over us. We went to the moon. It's how we got there. That's a conspiracy. Any evidence? All the evidence says that we faked the moon landing. There's no evidence that we went to the moon. We may have gone to the moon. People don't understand how logic works. I cannot prove that we never went to the moon. I can, however, prove that what we were told by NASA is... its By the way, guys, it's really hard to prove a negative. Like when Kavanaugh had to prove that he didn't rape someone without knowing when, where or who, or even the month it happened, and still almost did it with his journals and all his shit. It's almost impossible to prove a negative. It's, it's easy to prove we never went to the moon. There's no technological capability. Even just the live feed from the moon, the fact that NASA claims we no longer have the technology because we destroyed it and it's too painful to bring it back, the fact they destroyed all the telemetry data for no reason and then lied about it, the fact all the moon rocks came from Earth, provably, that, they, that these idiots gave to other countries. One was petrified wood, and they all contained traces of brass, which is a man-made uh, metal. There, you can watch the astronauts unable to even come up with the same story of whether or not they could see the stars. Might want to get your story down first, guys. Uh, the, the, the frigid temperatures and the blazing heat of space would not be, uh, like when, when Apollo whatever lost its, uh, environmental controls and it was just this, this paper thin piece of whatever, uh, between them and, and a vacuum of infinite coldness or heat, uh, they'd all be dead immediately. And also space junk, one screw going 20,000 miles an hour would go right through it. And pss, it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. I don't even have to talk about, uh, oh, and there's, there, right now we couldn't do a live broadcast from the moon. It's not possible. Uh, the, uh, the film wouldn't survive the Van Allen belt. They're on tape doctoring a video. Neil Armstrong was not allowed to give uh, an interview. For uh, 40 years after he blatantly looked like he was lying, Buzz Aldrin admitted to a little girl we never went to the moon and then kind of took it back 10 minutes later. Uh, a lot of murders, too. A lot of suicides. Buzz Aldrin's mother's maiden name was Moon, and she committed suicide right before Buzz went to the moon. Agree to disagree. We went to the moon many times. You can't just say agree to disagree. NASA, which gets $58 million a day. And by the way, when people say, why would we even go back to the moon? There's nothing there. You have scientists from the 60s saying it would be the greatest place to have a scientific station imaginable. No atmosphere. You can do tests. You can see things that you would never see. You would have golf tournaments, blah, 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 blah. Okay, one-sixth the gravity, they did not act one-sixth the gravity one bit. Uh, the rovers would not have driven that way. Each rover cost the taxpayers $60 million in, in 1970s money. Uh, it, it's just nonsense. Every president has said that we would go back and then failed. Even our private sector has failed. No other country has ever went back to the moon. And the number one argument that people have that we went to the moon is there are reflectors on the moon. Look, I can prove it. There's a reflector on the moon. Makes no sense. So no technology, no other country followed in our footsteps. We deleted all the evidence. We were absolutely incapable of live broadcasting with that amount of energy or technology from the moon then or now. 
uh, the moon rocks all had elements of uh, earth in it, or they were petrified wood. And then all people say then is a uh, secret space program. Okay, let's fill me in on the on the secret. Hang on, someone said he has a 147 IQ, guys. Don't question his logic. Now you're banned. No, why don't you question my logic? How about this, ready? Name one other time in history that technology has went in reverse. Since 1900 until now. Name one other time in history where, where you had technology in 1969 that you no longer have now. I mean, I'm not even specifying that it has to do with a aeronautics or, um, you know, guidance systems, rocket systems. Guys, look at a cruise missile and then compare it with the Saturn V rocket. Okay? Technology has advanced to a degree that you can't imagine. And yet they're saying that we can't go back because we no longer have the technology. What about the calculations? Apparently it was one black woman that did it by hand. I'm, this is from NASA. It was one black woman. They did a movie about her. Did it by hand, and, and now they can't find it. Okay, what about the telemetry data? One ton of data was reused. So when people say, oh, the tape, the tape, uh, it didn't have any value. The technology advanced. A, that's ironic to say the technology advanced when their main argument is that we no longer have the technology. B, they reused it because they said they had budgetary problems in the 70s, even though they got... Uh, what, 20 border security walls a year with no more space programs? Hang on, someone said, oh, and I'm an engineer, hang on. Oh, and I'm an engineer, space is not cold. Temperature means nothing to astronauts, it's all about heat transfer. Do you understand that? Yes, there's a difference between heat and temperature. Of course I understand that. The amount of molecules in a space with the vi vibration is uh, temperature, heat is energy transfer. That's why the melting point of aluminum and stuff like that is different in uh, with less dense air around it. Of course, I understand all that. Nothing I said has anything to do with that. They do claim that it's frigid and you would die in space. They claim that, right? Because there's either no heat or tons of radiation. You know that they say the ionosphere and the ozone layer and all this stuff blocks harmful radiation from here, right? Okay, so without those uh, protections, what happens in space, retard? So without the ionosphere, without the ozone layer, without the, the protection, without our, um, our magnetic poles, you would get all the radiation. So then what happens? That's why you need five feet of lead. I know you said you're an engineer. That doesn't mean anything if you can't think. When has technology went in reverse? What other time in history has an explorer went someplace, planted a flag from a nation, and no other nation followed suit? None. Russia, China, Israel, none of them ever went again. Name one other time. Never once. Oh, and your moon rocks shouldn't be petrified wood. Bill Nye is an engineer. My wife, a stay-at-home mother, is also an engineer. She, I guarantee, has a better degree than you do, smart boy. She has a structural engineering degree from USC, and she graduated in the top quarter of her class, and that's including Asians. So my wife, who focuses mostly on um, tit feeding and, uh, you know, doing mom stuff, is more of a fucking engineer than the guy that's like, hey, man, listen, I'm an engineer. I'm just going to have to uh, poke right in here and say, Big Bear, you don't understand the difference between heat and temperature. Uh, it's about, you know, density of molecules and how fast. Uh, such a fag. You, you know you're a fag. You, you don't think I understand the difference between going in a 190-degree sauna and 190-degree water? Do you think I don't understand the difference of that? that? That's why that wasn't an argument I was making. We never went to the moon. Never, ever once. And you can say agree to disagree, but that doesn't mean anything. What I said means something. So when you look at a plane 
from the 1950s, when you look at rocket technology from the early 60s, when you look at radios, cell phones, oh wait, cell phones didn't exist, computers didn't exist, we have NASA astronauts bragging that they had less technology than an iPhone and it got them to the moon and back. And then the same breath they say, we no longer have the technology to go to the moon because we destroyed it and it's too painful to bring it back. Well, where's the proof you went? We destroyed it. Well, what about those moon rocks? Petrified wood. Well, what about those videos where you guys were jumping like eight feet in the air? 18 inches max, which makes no sense given um, a 90 pound pack, 170 pound man, and one six gravity. That, that makes no sense at all. Well, what about all the, 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 the space junk and the Van Allen belt and the, none of it, none of it. It's so, and by the way, this is a week when you should understand lies. Russia collusion, lie, all of it a lie. So that's with the internet after two fucking years. Imagine the lie of NASA. That's in the 60s and 70s when there was no internet and we were still a high trust society. Do you now think that maybe there was a chance that there were motivations for people to lie about the space race? Yes. I don't think that AIDS is real either, but that's another story. Owen thinks Alex Jones is real. Me, give him some time. I've watched you grow so fast and learn so much it amazes me. You love the truth, so I know you will always find it. That's, that's so true. Like, so many people have been like that in my life where they're like, it's all right, Big Bear. We know. Just We'll just give you time. I used to be like, Jews are awesome. Jews literally are the reason we have capitalism and we're flourishing. Without the loans, we couldn't do business. And so many people are like, you'll, you'll figure it out. Because that's the thing is when – that's why the moon landing is such a linchpin. When you can figure out the moon landing is bullshit, people know – that you'll get to the Jews. Because if you are literally looking at the world with your eyes open, eventually you will see stuff. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all engine running. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not uh, an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there. And we choose to go to the moon. We didn't go there. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal. We didn't go there. Will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. We didn't go there. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept. One we are willing to accept. We didn't go there. And one we fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. And this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. So the moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to. 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 And what you're seeing here
That's my question. I want to know what I think I know. Because we didn't go there. Because we didn't go there. I'm very uh, insular these days. I'm like, I'm not into talking to strangers, but I am talking to Eric uh, Dubay next week. I'm curious to hear what he has to say. Some people are terrified of the flat earth shit. I'm not. I think it's fascinating. You know, you know, the people that demonize flat earth and are like, Flat Earth people are retards. It's like, yeah, you know, a, a, a pressurized ball spinning in an infinite vacuum. I mean, if you think that that's like, listen, that's probably true. Maybe I'm my jury's still out, but like a pressurized spinning ball of liquid in an infinite vacuum. By the way, you can never feel any movement. If you're spinning 20,000 miles an hour, if there's just an adjust, like if you're driving 60 and you go to 59 or 61, you can feel it. But if you're spinning 20,000 miles an hour and it goes to 20,000 miles in one mile an hour, you should be able to feel like a slight move. Like when you're in the teacups, <laughs> you know, people are like, oh, you're an idiot. No, no, no. See, that doesn't work on me. That doesn't work on me. I'm a free, I'm free. I'm a free th thinker. You can't just call me an idiot and expect any response. It's not okay to think that the earth is flat. So trust your eyes and trust your experience. Trust your feeling, trust your intuition. Look out, see the horizon flat. Feel for yourself. You're not moving. Just sit still. Just sit still for a second. You're not moving. You're not speaking. 
spinning around an axis at a thousand miles per hour, rotating around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour, spiraling around the galaxy at 500,000 miles per hour, and shooting off from a big bang at 67 million miles per hour, you're not. You're motionless, you're just sitting there. Just sit still. What does that even mean, sit still? You think you could sit still with all those motions? Just feel like you're moving? Feel that? Same thing you've always felt? Nothing. Ever. Nobody's ever felt movement. Nobody's ever seen the earth move. Nobody's ever seen the earth curve. Maybe you just got fooled by some masons. Mark Twain said, it's easier to fool people than to convince them they've been fooled. That's why it's so hard to convince you you've been fooled. You can't possibly believe that you and the rest of the world could have been lied to and deceived by these masons. The oldest and largest secret society in the world, over five million members all over the world, existing for hundreds of years, but not you, right? couldn't fool you. Of course you're spinning around. Of course you are. That's what they told you in school. They don't lie to you in school. It's not okay to say that the earth is flat. This is some sort of strange denial. I don't know where it comes from. And it's something where I keep getting this question. We really need to put this question to bed because we've known the Earth as a sphere for a long time. I think the fuck is flat. I don't give a fuck. I don't think it's spinning for shit. <laughs>